Anything else anyone got to get out of their system? <laughs> no. No. Welcome, everyone, to Tech Connect. I almost forgot the name of the podcast. <laughs> this is your semi monthly, bi weekly uh, connection from. The tech department. I always get confused with those semis and buys and like, what's it mean? Because like, biweekly to me says two times a week. It it can mean both. It can mean it's both. So but if weird. we did this two times a week, the, the three people that listened, yeah, would, fewer listeners. Uh, would, maybe they would just they would unsubscribe. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> or either that they'd be at the door like block our emails. Yeah. <laughs> um. So, anyways, uh, this is our opportunity for the technology department here in Coloma to uh, just. Uh, talk at you, answer questions, and just uh, talk about what's going on in general with technology, because there's a lot of changes always happening with technology. So I am Ben. I'm the technology director for the district. And to my left, this is Tanya. And this is Matt, the IT support specialist. I'm Dan. I'm glad Tanya went first to the left, because I got a little confused. (laughs) (laughs) I didn't know. Dan sitting to my right. For those of you that are just listening, it's okay. It's a Friday. We're we're here. We're 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 doing this. We all made it here at least. All right. So uh, first up is just what is everyone doing? What you up to? Um, I I I don't want to say this because I feel like I'm going to jinx it, but I already sent an email to the junior high staff. We have a technician that will be here in about an hour, forty five minutes or so to go over the final details for projector refresh in the junior high. What? Yeah, which is scheduled to happen over spring break, which means brand new projectors, laser projectors, so they're going to be brighter. Lasers. Lasers. The, the projectors with freaking laser beams on their... Wait, that doesn't... Anyways, um, yes, Sharks laser projectors. With laser with, <laughs> they're going to be brighter um, and hopefully last a Faster. heck of a lot longer faster Cleaner? and they're going to have and all brand new inputs so everyone will be hd hd quality from the projector to the wall to your device so no more vga cables and no more upscaling downscaling we've done this at the intermediate we switched over last year to the intermediate and we've had rock solid audio video out of the intermediate so we're looking forward to that at the junior high so that's what's going on for me right now what about you tanya i just got into the fourth grade classrooms and we worked on some sequencing and storytelling of the true story of the three little pigs and we just needed a little bit more time but it was great to actually uh, kind of expand a little bit and do some things with language arts and the spheros that's been cool i've been watching uh i've been listening to you tell me about uh, all the interactions in the classrooms, and it sounds like it's it's been challenging but fun. It has been challenging, and uh, I encourage anyone that's uh, actually listening to us that is in the school district to you know reach out to me if you have some ideas or some content that you would like to cover and don't know how maybe the technology might fit into that. Uh, I am here to help you figure it out. So we got all sorts of cool toys and gadgets and things. Absolutely. With more on the way. Woo-hoo. Uh, so I've mostly just been doing a lot of repairs and setting up new equipment lately. Uh, like I learned how to actually enter uh, PCs into our system with Alpha Nathan uh, recently with our new Razer and Intune system. Uh, and then on top of that, I've also uh, been working a lot with the Moss guys, helping them whenever they need to with the vape sensors, uh, making sure they're in our system and cleaned off because we did have a few issues with some of them uh, not working correctly. But It helps when you remove the plastic film. Yes. Off of the, the plastic <laughs> film that I know some of you out there still have, like on your phones and things like, not your not your cell phones, your but refrigerator. your refrigerator or your desk phones and everything. Yeah. We, I found <laughs> one in the elementary like that. Still had the plastic over yeah. the phone. Yeah. So we've been, yeah. It's a lot easier <laughs> yeah. for the vape sensor to actually detect things when the sensor itself is uncovered. 
But yeah, just mostly a lot of like troubleshooting, answering tickets. Uh, had a few head scratchers lately, so it's it's been interesting. Cool. For me, I'm gearing up for the McCall conference, which is going to be next week, or by Woo. the time you hear that, that, by the time you hear this, it's going to be this week, probably. Yep. Um. So yeah, pretty excited about that. About two thousand, two thousand plus educators and coming together in Detroit to talk educational technology, and I know three of us at this uh, on this podcast are going, and and Matt. Matt's going to be left in charge of the entire technology department for a couple days. It's because we trust Matt that, that much. Yes. After Confidence. just a month on the job, he is rocking and yes. rolling. You got yes. this. So super excited for that. And then, again, working on stuff for next year already. So just uh, in, in my role, I have to send letters to private schools and just got those all taken care of, asking if they'd like to participate in our Title I programming. So fun. Oh no, it's not. But yes, we'll Check call it fun. Hey, so, it's 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 what it's we a do. Federal requirement. <laughs> All right, here we go. Into the questions from you guys because we didn't have any questions last week. We just talked about ChatGPT. If you haven't listened to it, go back listen to that episode. And if you have questions, definitely ask us about ChatGPT. So there's two questions. They both came in from two individuals. One of them. One of them from the superintendent and the other one anonymous. I can't imagine who this anonymous person is, but both of these questions are talking about the background wallpaper on their computers. Why does my background change every time I take my computer off campus? It reverts back to a green background with the comet in the middle. So this is referencing the background that we push out for all of the student Chromebooks when they, um, when the, the Chromebooks are enrolled, there's a lot of things we manage with them, and we push out the background. One of the things we do to help, you know, like signify, yes, this is a Coloma device. They could see that. Great. Um, it's something that I have. This is, first of all, the reason it's happening is because of me. Um, it's not because I don't like. Blame Ben. Blame me. It's also, not because I. Also blame Nathan. It's not because, <laughs> it's not because I don't want. Uh, staff members. In this case, the the two of them would be the superintendent and you, Dan. Yep, that's, that's um, correct. It's not because I don't want them to be able to control their background. I am it, anonymous. <laughs> I was playing around with um with the management tool that we use to manage laptops, and rather than do it, I don't like to do things in mass to all the teachers, and then go, hey, whoa, this didn't work, or it worked and it stinks, and then get a lot of hate thrown back, um, which is okay and understandable, um, but. I just did it to the superintendent <laughs> um, and, and Dan. And so, um, yeah, that's my fault. I didn't realize it would continually try to push out and change that. So now I know I'm going to go back and change that setting so you can change it to whatever you want. But we did learn that the management tool through that, the management tool that we have for the, the, the staff machines, if we do that, it's not only going to change their background, all of your backgrounds, to whatever we set it, but you won't be able to change it back. And that's silly for staff members. I'd like staff members to be able to personalize their machine. So it's good feedback, and I appreciate the question. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Okay. All right. All right. Here's, here's, here's a question that's more applicable um, to a lot of people. Um, Brittany wants to know, what typing websites do you recommend for elementary students? Who's got thoughts on this one? What typing websites do you recommend? Typing websites as in websites where you can go and practice your home row, touch typing. Thoughts? I'm trying to remember the one I used when I was a kid. I know Nitro Type's pretty popular, and that's kind of gamified, so it's a lot of fun for a lot of for, it's fun for some kids that like to be competitive and and have that opportunity. But it's got uh, race cars, and as you type and get them correct, your race car goes faster. Um, obviously, that's not going to reach all of our kids. Some of our kids don't want to compete, don't want to do that. So, um, but that's one of them. There's a couple other ones like Typing Club. Um, is another one that I know I have used with students before, um, and that's kind of a nice way to to practice the typing and kind of get them moving towards. But I did use that with with older kids, not elementary students, so I don't know how far that drops down. So, right, right, because it's like 
I used to I used to do first of all Nitro Type. I second that one. Um, that's a really popular one. And way back in the day, the last three or four years, I was in the classroom. Um, I was doing technology as a specials at the elementary level, and Nitro Typing was one of the the more popular ones because it had that nice game element to it. Um, but um, I know Typing dot com. Uh, typing dot com is one that has that launches to Nitro Type. Um, but then there's also other games that are there as well. There's like Fruit Ninja, but typing, right? So oh, you yeah, type, yeah, yeah. and then the fruit yep. gets sliced. Um, there's at one point there was like a a, a pitfall like game. I'm pulling it up right now. Oh, there's there's like a um, Plants vs Zombies type game where you're typing, type a balloon, type tots. So it's got stuff that's I guess content is 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 appropriate. For elementary kids, yeah, nothing too scary or gruesome or anything. It's um, kind of similar to the games they're already playing and stuff on their phone, so more engaging for them, mm-hmm. right? Um, I don't know. Uh, one one I found was kids type. Uh, it seems like pretty good to me. Uh, it's got all kinds of different grade levels that you can pick from, as well as difficulty levels. So even if you put in that this is an elementary kid and they're kind of doing well, you can you know push them a little bit, and it's got variety of different games uh like races and like you know the ninja type fruit ninja type game you were talking about and stuff um, right right but there are options out there um, kind of dance mat that. typing is another good one yeah that uh, that's is. Put, i that's forgot put by, about that one put out by the bbc so yes, is that still available it's still available oh my gosh like, cuz that was the, i was going to say that was the one that i used because for the really young kids, because that was a lot of fun um, for them. But yeah. dance mat typing, yep. yeah, if you yes, can find I it, if it's still out there, too. that one's good. Toolbox.tools.bbc.co.uk. Ooh, man, we'll have to put show notes with that stuff. But yeah, that one was that one was more appropriate for, for elementary because the cartoon voices on it were really goofy and really silly and, like, super... Hey, you did a good job. All right. Yay. You know, that sort of thing. So it, it was one of those things where if you try to do it at like a fourth or fifth grade level or middle school, they might cringe mm. pretty hard. Did I use that word correctly? Yeah. I don't okay. know. I'm too old. Uh, I, re- as the resident young person, I, I think you did. <laughs> Great. So Nitro Type, um, typing.com. Dance mat typing. What was the one you said, Matt? Uh, kids type. Kids type. You got anything there, Tanya? I'm drawing a blank. The only thing I can think of, um, and just because my brain is on create, create, create. Yeah. Um, like have, going into coding, um, like Scratch and creating their own little coding game. I mean, uh, to go along with typing. Gotcha. Right. Yeah. Like so not typing practice. practice, but like yeah application of it. Yes, but they could create some sort of little game where it would be like press D three times. Press, you know. That might like, be a good that, that, I could see that as a really good enrichment for RTI. Mm-hmm. You know, hey, these kids, when we go to RTI time, these kids right here, they're knocking it out of the park. They don't need a whole lot of uh, extra during RTI time, so maybe give them something like Scratch, which I believe is unlocked. I think uh, I think all our kids can Yeah, no, it. I think so too. No, it's a great resource as well. Should be at least. Cool. There might be some uh, some games that are already created through Scratch too. There's a whole community of mm-hmm. yep. things. Sometimes you have to be a little careful, you know, where you're sending your kids and giving them free, you know, reign of all of what is the interwebs. But yeah, um, it's just it might be something worth checking out. All right. All right. Next question. This one is not on the instructional side of things. It's more on the FERPA side of things. It's actually on the FERPA side of things. This one comes from uh, Robbie, one of our secretaries. Wants to know, how do you email a sealed or locked message for FERPA protection of student or staff privacy? So what she's asking about is, you can send just a regular generic email, right? Or, some of you may have gotten this before, you'll get an email, and the email will say, hey, the contents of this email are protected. There will be another follow-up email, or there will be a code that you need to put in in the follow-up email or sent to your phone or whatever in order to unlock it. And it's a way to 
send messages securely through email so that way people can't just the the issue here she's asking about FERPA is if you scan in some student records and you just email it to someone right like that person could get it, or if their email has been hacked, multiple people could be getting it. Or And if you send the passcode for said document via email, you've kind of, if it's already been compromised, <laughs> you don't want to necessarily do that. Right. So, you know, this is something that, that has to happen with a lot of the documents related to our migrant students and our migrant program. So it's a, there's a little lock when you're composing a, a message in Gmail. This and is on the, on the desktop. This is on the desktop, on, on a computer, yep. on a Windows, Mac, Chrome OS device. Um, if you are on a tablet or using a Gmail app elsewhere, it's called confidential mode, and it's available with the three dots. But essentially, you kind of set it in. You send that message in a confidential mode. You provide a, a passcode for it. And then usually what I do is I will verbally call and make the phone call to the, the, the recipient and give them the passcode to be able to open it right. or text it to them, um, you know, if that's the option. But basically, you can kind of do that, and you can also set an expiration and say this file expires. Um, if you don't want to do that with the email, you can also use your Adobe on your computer to lock a PDF. Oh, yep, because mm, the yep. – if and, and this, this is with Adobe Professional. Is that the professional? I don't know if Adobe Reader does it, but – for secretarial, we we have Adobe Professional for you if you need it, so we can make that happen. So for for the office workers, yep. it is possible. And again, you can set an expiration, so you can say if you don't get to this in a day, it goes away. You don't get to this in a week, it goes away. Right. It's up to you. But it's one of the things that we have to do for our migrant program. Um, so it's really important uh, that we protect the identity of of our students and and their data. So. That's just one way to do it is that confidential mode. It's a lock when you're on your when you're composing on a computer um, a message. There's a little lock there and you just do that. And then obviously the recommendation would be to connect with somebody another way to let them know of the passcode, whether that's like snail mail mm -hmm. through, through the post office or, you know, through a phone call or a text message, just something that's not the same medium that you're sending the uh, actual information in is if it's compromised and that's why we're doing it is with the suspicion that our emails may be compromised right so there are definitely so. low tech ways of doing it that the, i mean inner office mail the remc mail stuff like that this is how can you use gmail and yep that's exactly how to do it um that confidentiality mode and like dan said on the desktop when you go to compose a new email at the very bottom of that email where it's got all of your choices for like font size, color, there's a little lock icon. Click that. It'll walk you through how to set up the passcode. And the expiration date, I think, is the most important one, though. Because even if somebody's account does get compromised, if you've got the expiration date in there, it's only available for a week. Okay, great. After a week, it doesn't matter if it's compromised or not. No one can get it. So that is definitely how to do it. If you need help, reach out to us. Put a ticket in, send an email, let us know, and we'll come down and we'll help you with it. So that's it. That's it for this week's podcast. A lot shorter than the, the, <laughs> the super long <laughs> chat GPT episode. That's all we have for questions. Well, no Ooh. promises for the next one, though, because we'll all have amazing things to bring back from McCall, McCall. to share with yeah. you. So. Except for Matt, who will have amazing things about how he protected the district from <laughs> all of these cyber attacks and everything that were coming in. <laughs> Yeah, that's exactly, yep, new job duties. Uh, yeah. Uh, anyway, <laughs> it'll be an exciting week. <laughs> All right. Yeah, so if... Be uh, easy on him. Yeah, there, there we go. There we go. If you're listening to this before March 15th, 16th, and 17th, please, 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 um, you know, put in tickets. But, uh, you know, just give Matt a high Softballs. five or a thumbs up. Because uh, he will, Bring him he will be the technology. Oh, cookies. cookies and chocolate. He'll be the technology team for those cookies. three days. <laughs> All right. That's it. Happy spring break, everybody. Happy spring break.